What's up, fam? Who's excited for church on a Sunday? Come on, y'all make some noise if you're excited for church. And uh, y'all do me a favor, everybody stand one more time. We're going to do what we've been doing. Come on, y'all pack up in here, in the front, in the middle, like you love each other. It's a church family around here. We got this big old room. We don't even need this big old room. Let's get in here together like we're hanging in the living room. Come on, y'all come up in here with me so I can see your faces. I I preach better when I can see you now. Come on. Hey, while we're at it, let's give it up for anybody with us for the first time today. So glad you're here with us if it's your first time. And then shout out to our online fam who watch online with us every week. Glad y'all are here. There we go. Now I can see everybody. I like that. That feels good. I can see y'all today. Uh, If we've never had the privilege to meet, my name is Kevin, along with my wife, Megan. She's back there in Trove Heights Kids. Uh, We are the pastors here. So glad you're here. And again, watching online, thank you for being along for the journey. This is part three of our Real Love series. And uh, last week, she did a great job. Did she do a good job, y'all? That was a lot of fun. I I love shouting the preacher down. It was great. And uh, I got to go home with the preacher. It was good. It was a lot of fun. I loved it. It's so good. And she did a great job talking about dating. Did that help anybody? Was that good? I know we got we got some single folks in the house. Raise your hand if you're single. Raise your hand if you're single. Keep them up. Y'all look around, see what you're working with here today. Come on, like AJ said. He said he found his wife in church. I did not. Come on, somebody. That was before Jesus. BC days, God changed us and it changed everything. And uh, we want to help you if at all possible, be able to get it right before you get to marriage. So today we're going to unpack marriage in church today, all right? Married folks in the house, come on, where you at? Married folks. Woo! All right, I'm, I'm going to yell loud. My wife, woo! Hopefully she heard me back in kids. I'll get some brownie points. <laughs> but we, uh, we've been married for 14 years now. And uh, next year's a big one because it'll be 15. So I'm like, I got to start planning now what that's going to look like. We dated for four years before we got married. And uh, we did a lot of things the wrong way leading up to our marriage. And then in the first two and a half, three years of our marriage, that was before we went all in with Jesus. And, and it was not the best. And so my goal out of today is to be able to help you not endure the heartache and pain that we had to go through that we could have saved ourselves from, so to speak, okay? Um, If you've ever walked through with a premarital counselor, some of you who got married, maybe you did that. We did not do that. I I should have done that. We should have done that. It would have helped us. And I want to encourage you if you are in that space to do that. If if you're getting ready to get married or you're watching online and you're like, man, I'm going to get married. I'm here. Like, uh, hit us up. We will help you with that. We've walked through a couple of people in our church before they got ready to get married and walk through the premarital counseling and all that kind of stuff. It sets you up for success. And at Trove, Hearts, at Trove Heights, our goal is not just to give you a good word every Sunday and just talk about faith. Like, I love that. I'm a faith preacher. Y'all know, summertime, we talked about faith will. Wasn't that good? Like, it's coming, faith will. I love that stuff. But I got to help you in your relationships. Like we unpacked week one. If you missed that, go back and watch it on YouTube. Week one, we talked about relationships. And Jesus, last week on this planet, And last night on this planet, before he would go to the cross and eventually be crucified, he's dead for three days, he rose back to life, and he went to heaven to be seated at the right hand of the Father. Before all that happened, his last week on earth, and then his last night, he unpacked two things, the Holy Spirit and relationships. I'd venture to say that's what Jesus had to talk about on his last night on this earth, that they're pretty important pieces to our lives. Because at the end of the day, all of us are affected by our relationships. Every one of us. Now, how many of you, if you're not married, you plan on getting married? Plan on getting married? Um, Okay, how many of you plan on never getting married? If you plan on never getting married, all right, well, I'm gonna try to make this work for you, okay? All right, the the goal is that I can help us all get set up with where we wanna go because we talked about it week one that you can go fast by yourself, but you can go far together. And I think sometimes we go into a relationship the wrong way and it sets us up for failure from the get-go because we had the wrong perspective or thought process as we were getting ready to go into this thing. So here's my goal out of today. My goal is to help everybody, regardless of where you're at in your relationship journey, married, not married, single, wanna be married, wanna be single. If you're married, you do not wanna be single, all right? Let's say that up front on this message, okay? We're gonna help you stay married today, all right? Regardless of where you're at in your journey, my goal is to help us strengthen our marriages or prepare to become married and do it in a healthy manner before we ever get to that point. That's my goal out of today's message, all right? Because I think you gotta understand that marriage is a very important piece to the way that God set things in order in our lives. It's all throughout the Bible, starts in the book of Genesis. We're gonna unpack that here in a moment. But how many of you love love songs? Love songs, where's my love song, people? R&B folks, come on, where you at? I love me some good old R&B, right? Some some love songs. Now, listen, I did not come up with country music. 
I did not. And then I moved to Nashville and God's working on me, all right? I, get, I came up with R&B. Like I had me some genuine, come on somebody, some Jodeci, come on, where y'all at? Come on, 112, come on somebody. Like I, this is what I came up with. Y'all wanna sing a little bit in church today? Come on, who wants to help me sing today, all right? Come on, y'all remember this one? Y'all remember uh, Back at One? Hey, who, who, who came up with that song, Back at One? Brian McKnight. Brian McKnight, thank you. Yes, he did. It was not a country song. It's an R&B song. If you don't know the, the R&B song, you should go check out that version. Brian McKnight, greatest singer of all time. He was singing, Brian McKnight. And it was, uh, one, you're like a dream come true. Two, just want to be with you. Three, girl, it's plain to see that you're the only one. Come on, y'all sing with me. And four, repeat steps one through three. Five, make you fall in love with me. Whenever I believe my work is done, then I'll start back at work. Come on, y'all know the song. Come on. Oh, that's a good song. That's a good song. That's a good so, some, Somebody the other day was like, one of the guys on the team, he's like, what's up with you singing a lot lately? I'm like, I'm back in my old fields, like back in the day. Because look, I came up when I was in high school. This was before, this was before a kizzle days. If you know anything about my story, I, this is before like I started smoking, all this stuff. I'm the real pastor in case you're wondering. Right? This is a long time ago, long time ago, 20 years ago. And I, I, I played ball, I played basketball. I was a hooper in high school. And then I quit the team going into my senior year. Me and the coach had a little disagreement. And so then I realized after I quit basketball, I was gonna have to do a real class in fourth period of school. And I was like, Lord, what have I done? Well, needless to say, coach was like, you're out, bro. And so my brother was like, you should drive for the chamber choir. I was like, oh shoot, the choir? Y'all are a bunch of choir nerds. That's actually how I met my wife. Praise God, okay? <laughs> so I went, I was a part of the choir. In my senior year, I sang a solo. In the last concert of the year, I sang some, I believe I can fly. Come on, somebody. That's what I did. That's what I did now. That was back in the day. I wanted to be a singer today. I am not that. I'm never going to be on Trove Heights Worship, but I'll sing a little bit with y'all today. Y'all like this? You want to sing some more? Y'all want to sing some more? Okay, let's see. What, what else do I got up there? Let me, let me see what I got on my... Uh, uh, let's see. Okay, y'all okay, remember Mario? Yeah. Baby, you should let me love you. Let me be the one to give you everything you want and need. Baby, good love and protection. Make me your selection. Show you the way love's supposed to be. I see you back there, Mike. I told you today's for you, bro. Today's for you. You're my homie, all right? What else I got up there? Let's see. Uh, come on. Y'all know some music, Soul Child. Come on, somebody. All right, come on. Come on. I can hear some love. So many things I've got to tell you. But I'm afraid I don't know how Cause there's a possibility that you look at me differently, love <laughs> Y'all gonna mess me up So then, uh, so, alright, what else we got? Hold on, let me see what else I got on the screen over here Oh, she came up in here, she, she heard me singing her song <laughs> Baby, I promise these things to you. So why will we let this thing go? Baby, I promise that I'll stay true. Don't let nobody say it ain't so. Cause baby, I promise. All right, okay. What, all right, I, got a, I got just got a couple. For, all my life. Come on, I'll pray for someone like you. And that I, that I finally found you. Whoa, oh. Okay, that's a great one. I'm worshiping up here now. Like, let's go. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Then I got to hit some. Uh, meet me at the altar in your white dress. We ain't getting no younger, we might as well do it, yeah. Feel you all the while, girl, I must confess that let's get married. I just want to get what's going on across the sea. Come on, y'all know about it. It ain't nothing. I ain't fronting shorty coming with me. Come on, that's 
That's that, that's that, that's that all. I just want to take it nice and slow. No, next week we're talking about that, y'all, okay? Y'all bookmark that for next Sunday. Y'all give it up for yourself, singing you some love songs this morning. Next week, I'm going to hit y'all with the good stuff. Uh, y'all, y'all better invite somebody to church next week. We're talking about sex. All right, it's going to be a good one, okay? Seriously, though, I think I, think I said it last week. Like I, We're going to talk about two more things over the course of this series, marriage and sex. And I said, I ain't going to tell you which one. Because I think we have a lot of people in the world and the culture we, we live in today that we want to hear all we can about sex, but we don't want to learn nothing about marriage. Why, why is that in our culture today? Because it, we, unfortunately, we treat people, the opposite sex, like cars, don't we? We're like, hey, before I decide to purchase this car, I'm going to need to test drive this car. And I need to make sure that me and this car are compatible and we work together. So therefore, I got to test everything about this car. And then I'll know if I need to move forward with this car or discard this car and find another car. And we take that into our relationships and the culture that we live in. But you got to know today that marriage is a very important piece of the way God set things into motion in his word. So at Trove Heights, how many of you have never heard this stuff talked about in church? Anybody never heard marriage, sex, any of this stuff? Like we're gonna talk about this at Trove Heights because it's in God's word. And if we don't teach it and talk about it, then the world is gonna teach us about it. And I'm telling you, if you do it the world's way, you will get the world's results. If you do it God's way, you'll get God's results. And I don't know about y'all, but I just will be the first to raise my hand and say, I want God's results in my relationships, in my life, in my marriage. I want it done the right way. I want it done the right way, which means it's got to start with us. What is marriage? All right, I found some some good funny funny stuff that'll help you here. What is marriage? Marriage is a relationship in which one person is always right and the other one is the husband. (laughs) My wife would be amen if she was in here. Behind every husband who thinks he wears the pants is a wife who told him which pants to wear. Y'all agree with that? I do not in Jesus' name. Marriage is simple. Your wife does what she wants to do, and you do what she wants to do. There you go. That's, that's marriage. Uh, then how about this one? Being married is like having a best friend who doesn't remember anything you say. Come on, y'all. Know, y'all know. Maybe you're not even married yet. You're like, I already know about that. Me and Megan have been through a lot in uh, four years of dating and 14 years of marriage. Been, been together for 18 years, and we've learned a lot. Uh, but we went into our marriage honestly broken from the beginning. We were not following Jesus. Neither of us were. Uh, Jesus was kind of an afterthought. We actually did a lot of things the wrong way. Uh, We lived together before we were married and it's part of our story. And I love that we can come talk to you about our story and teach you, because how many of you know the best ways you can learn sometimes is through other people's mistakes. I wanna help you here and then bring you God's word. But we got married four years in. We knew we were, we knew we were in love. We knew we were, we were married, like we wanted to be married for the rest of our lives. We were all in on it, but we came from different backgrounds and your backgrounds determine a lot. Megan, came up from a family that was broken. Mom and dad married and divorced multiple times, remarried each other, got divorced, married other people. There were all kinds of pain and things involved. I grew up with a family where my parents to this day are still married, 42 years in, still going strong. Praise God, it's an amazing model I got to witness, but she did not get to experience the same thing. So she carried in one thought process of what marriage looked like in our marriage. And I had a whole different thought process and we didn't talk about it enough, but we were madly in love, right? You're just just madly in love. How many of y'all know opposites attract, right? Isn't that what they say? Opposites attract. Well, after you get married, opposites attack. I'm just telling you, you better get ready. And we learned that the hard way, but I'm gonna take you back to our wedding day. I'm gonna show you. This was Megan on our wedding day. She was all beautiful. She had her dress. She was all pretty. She she was so beautiful. Then we're at the altar. We're we're going through the vows. We're just like, it's just, it was a beautiful day. Day, and then I have no idea what this picture was. I have no idea what this next one is. And the photographer was thinking, but we were in a bathtub. We were like, oh, we're going to take a picture in a bathtub. If you're getting married, talk to your photographer before they sit you in the bathtub. I don't, I don't know what that was about. But there were things that we went into our marriage with. And after that day happened, life began. And we woke up the next day like, all right, now I guess this is life. What do we do? And while we both had different pictures and thought processes of what marriage was supposed to look like, the word of God was nowhere to be found in the center of of our lives. And I just want to tell you here on the front end that if you are married 
Or if you are planning to be married one day, maybe you're already with somebody and you're dating, maybe that you're moving that direction. Maybe you're single and you're just looking for it one day. I wanna tell you right here and right now, if you love God first, you will love your spouse better. I wanna set the message up with that on the front end and we're gonna come back to that thought because over the last 50 years, divorce in America has gone up 700%. Not, not 7%, not 70, 700%. They say one out of two marriages today end in divorce and the number is actually slightly higher in the church. Think about this. The number is higher in the church versus people who are not churched. It's because we go in with a mindset that is wrong. We're not built on God's word. We're built on feelings. I'm gonna help you with all this today, but I think it's important to understand that we have to build it all on God's words because if we allow the normalcy of relationships in the world to infiltrate the church and our lives, then we're gonna get the world's results. Now, maybe you were married at one point and you got divorced. Maybe you're watching online, you got divorced at some point. I want you to know today that there is healing. God provides healing. He is the healer and he can set new things in course and help you go on the right track to do things the way his word says. Because here's the deal. Regardless of what your relationships have looked like to this point, you are not bad. Okay, I need somebody to hear that today. It doesn't matter what your background is. You are not bad. That God's word is not telling you you're bad. God's word is just gonna tell you, here's what it can be if you do this. And that's what we wanna unpack here today because it's important. Genesis chapter two, verse 18, it says, the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone, Adam and Eve. I will make him a helper fit for him. This is, God has created all the animals. God's created everything out there. And then he creates man, which this is a total separate message. But notice God created everything and then he created man because he created your purpose before he created you. He created the purpose, then he created the thing to accomplish the purpose. Meaning that God already has your days ordained and destined. He's got a hope and a future for you. And if you just lean into that, I'm telling you, it'll go a direction that only God can give you. It's his goal for you. Fast forward into verse 24, it says, therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh. The two shall become one. Unfortunately, in our culture today, it's, Two separate people that are deciding to, let's try this thing side by side. I'll, I'm gonna try my best. L Y'all listen, marriage is exactly this. And this is the title of my message today. If you're taking notes, it's marriage equals all in. Marriage is all in. And it's nothing less. A, a lot of people may think that great marriages and great relationships are not possible based off past experience, previous hurts. And I get that, man. I don't wanna discount maybe what some of us have been through and experienced in relationships and with people that we loved and cared about or that did us wrong and hurt us. But I want you to know that God can restore that part of your life and your heart. He can. And I, I, I think it's important to look at this in Lamentations chapter three. It says, I remember my affliction and my wondering, the bitterness and the gall, it says. I well remember them and my soul is downcast within me. Yet, this is the important part. Yet this I call to mind and therefore, I have hope because of the Lord's great love. I am not consumed for his compassions never fail. Guess what, everybody? They are new every morning and great is your faithfulness. I think you need to be reminded today that great is his faithfulness. And if your relationships haven't been to this point, what you had hoped for, let me just remind you that his faithfulness is great in your life. And if you allow him to be beyond this point, and you'll insert what his word says about these things, it'll strengthen your marriage or it'll help you walk into a relationship with the goal of getting married and staying married and being all in for the rest of my life. That was, that was kind of the place that I was in. We, we came up together with this Brian McKnight song called For the Rest of My Life. And it, the lyrics were, for the rest of my life, I'll be true. I'll be true for the rest of my, for the rest of my life. I wanna be able to walk in this way of what God's word says to do. So in order to do this, you gotta know that it doesn't just start with hearing this stuff and putting it into place. It starts with something on your end. You gotta do some things differently. So amazing how God works. This is the message of our church, but it's not just the message of our church. It's the message of the Bible is that with God, there is always another second chance. There's always a do-over. There's always a blank page. Let's start over. And regardless of how you came in here today, it doesn't matter what you did last night. It matters what you do with today forward, everybody. For the rest of my life, 
I'm gonna do some things that set me on a different trajectory. That's my goal is for you to be able to walk out of here knowing that today. Again, opposites, we talk about opposites and they attract, but jokingly, like I said, they attack after the fact. How many of you are the savers? Savers in a relationship? Savers, how many of you are the spenders? Come on, where's the spenders? Oh, we need, you, we need to help y'all spenders. I'm t- how many of you are punctual? You're punctual, you're on time everywhere? All right, where's the go with the flow people? Go with the flow you like to go with. Some of y'all just, all right, how, how about, uh, you're, you're people that when you go on a trip, you have an itinerary. Well-planned trips, anybody? Or how many of you are like, I'm just here for the journey. I'm just along for the ride. See, that's me, I'm like, where are we going? Let's just along for the ride. Everybody's opposite. So how do we go into it understanding this? A lot of times the problem is not that the person's different or they just won't change. The problem is we expected something from that person that we never told them. Unspoken expectations. Unspoken expectations hurt anybody and everybody in a relationship. If I got married and I told my wife, because here we go, does the toilet paper go over or under? Over, and it's in the word of God. No, it's not, but it should be. But maybe you're like, well, we, we fight about which way this goes or how you do this, who takes out the trash. There's gotta be some expectations that are set in place before you go into it. Along with that, a lot of us have put an expectation on that person to be what only God can be in our lives. And that person is not God. Marriage is a covenant between two imperfect people. So it's an unconditional relationship between imperfect people. That's challenging because when you get with an imperfect person, you're gonna find some imperfections. And you're gonna have to learn how to work with those imperfections. So you gotta know today that we're not here to see how long we can last. We're here to see how far we can go. That's the goal out of this today. We were watching... We were watching a TV show not long ago and they were interviewing this girl about this guy that she was dating and, and the response was, are you in love? Yeah, we're in love. I think I'm in love. I think I'm in love. And okay, do you, do you see this ending up in marriage? And her response was, I think we can last for a really long time. And that's the problem that we have in our culture today is we get married going, I think we might be able to last for a really long time, but how can we get married or stay married and know that for the rest of my life, I'm all in? How, how do we do that today? I want to help you with three things out of this. Now, you see in Matthew chapter 19, Jesus is dealing with the Pharisees who are the religious leaders of the day. The, re, the religious folks are always coming at Jesus with some different stuff. And Jesus is always like, man, your heart is off. Like you got your heart wrong. You, you know the scriptures, you know the law of Moses, but your heart is off. And they roll up to Jesus, verse three, Matthew 19. It says, some Pharisees came to him to test him. They asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning, the creator made them male and female. Notice what Jesus does. He takes them all the way back to the beginning. He's saying, listen, this has been here way before you and I were ever walking this earth. This is not like a new thing. It's always been here. He goes back to creation and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. He's quoting Genesis, what we just read. And the two will become one flesh. Verse six is very key. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. So he says, therefore, anytime you see a therefore, you need to go read and find out what it's there for. They are now one flesh. So therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. So basically what Jesus is telling them, he says, he said, you're worried about all the laws, but what you need to be more focused on is the fact that the two have now become one and you can't unone what was made one. Anytime you try to unone what was made one, there will be a tear. There will be some pain. There will be some hurt and some heartache and pain. So you could do that if you'd like based off what the law says, but you are gonna cost yourself a lot of pain. There'll be some tears in this process. And so in order to get this right, we have to understand exactly what I said a second ago, is that marriage is a covenant and not a contract. Mar- marriage is not like shopping for a car. Shopping for a house, it's not. Marriage is a covenant. Luke twenty two twenty. 20, it says in the same way, Jesus, after the supper, he took this cup. We would take communion in a church service. He passed it around and he said, this is the cup in the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. A covenant is exactly this. It's a relationship that is permanent and unconditional. Aren't you grateful that Jesus gave us the covenant of his blood and it was a permanent thing. Aren't you grateful for that? Because of that blood, man, we have been washed white as snow. We have been cleansed and we have eternal life because he took that covenant. He didn't, he didn't wait and decide, Hey, I'm going to do this, but are you, are you going to sign on the dotted line? Now, listen, if you break this contract, nope, Jesus made a covenant. And he says that we need to do the same thing. So a couple of things I'm going to give you covenant versus contract. Okay. Covenant is based on a mutual commitment. Covenant is based on mutual commitment. Contract is based based on mutual distrust. 
This is where we get things like prenups. Like I'm gonna go into the marriage and like, I, man, I've seen this counseling people before. They're like, we got two bank accounts. I got mine. He's got his. Wait a second. So you mean you, 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 you take your bodies and you make them one, but not your money? Like, so do you have a distrust? That, listen, I'm going to get a little bit in our business on this. I'm going to get a little preachy, but I'm just telling you nothing when you walk into your marriage should be separate. Nothing. If you, if you keep it separate, it's like saying, I got a plan B just in case. And I'm telling you, if you're all in, there is no plan B. When, when God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us, it was plan A and there has never and never will be a plan B. So when we go all in with Jesus, there should never be a plan B. When we go all in with our spouse, there should never be a plan B. This is all in, I'm making a covenant and I trust you. I'm giving you my full commitment. And here's why, because you don't need, you know, we say the vows for better or for worse, for rich or for poor. And as soon as it's worse, and as soon as we're broke and poor, we get out. Because you don't need these commitments for the good days. You need them for the bad days. That's why they're there, because they are coming. If you're on your way to getting married, let me just encourage you today. You're going to have some bad days. Come on. You're going to have some bad days and you got to lean on those commitments and that covenant. There's been times where Megan and I have had these moments, even still 14 years later, where we're just like at each other's throats because it's part of life. But we lean on those commitments. We lean on that covenant. Here's another one. Covenant surrenders rights and assumes responsibility. But commitment protects my rights and shirks responsibility. Because we get in this place of, I deserve to be happy. Well, they're just, not, they're just not making me happy. They're just not doing it for me anymore. Well, maybe you should just water the grass a little more because the grass is not greener on the other side. It's greener whether, where you water it. That's what we need to be all in on is I, I'm gonna be all in this together. It's not about me against you. It's about us. So we're in this together. Uh, Craig Rochelle has a book called From This Day Forward, he lays out five things for relationships. I'd highly encourage you to get this book if you're interested. From This Day Forward, and one of his five principles in the book is he says, fight fair. Meaning you never fight to win, you fight together to find resolve. That'll help somebody right there if nothing else does, okay? Here's another one. Covenant has the interest of the other in mind. That's covenant. Com commitment, or, or it's just a contract, has personal interest in mind. What's in it for me? Listen, you are gonna, your, your spouse is gonna need you on their worst day. And on their worst day, you may not be their best friend, but they are gonna need you because you're in this together. It's a covenant, not a contract. In Malachi chapter two, it says it this way, very clearly, very bold, very strong, but it's God's word. It says, the man who hates and divorces his wife, says the Lord, the God of Israel, does violence to the one he should protect. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful. It's, it's sad to think about the hurt and the pain and the lack of protection that we provide because we're so all about me. All of, what's in it for me? It's all about me. It's just not doing it. It's not working. They're not, they're not catering to my need. No, listen. Hey, listen, if you're in this room today, because we have some people in our church that I know you come to church and your spouse doesn't, you keep coming to church. You keep loving them well. You keep praying for them. You keep showing them Jesus and you love them unconditionally through covenant. Because eventually it'll change. That's kind of the part of our story that, that I want to really dive in with you to today. The first two and a half years of our marriage were a train wreck. It's honestly a miracle that we survived. We just had Makai, who is our oldest. He's about to be 13 next week. I'm about to have a teenager. It's wild. It's crazy. And I think back, he's a, he's a baby, three months old, because we got married and we were like, yeah, we're going to enjoy life for like a year or two before we have kids. Three months in, she called me. She said, I'm pregnant. I said, no, you ain't. I said, no, you ain't. That's a lie. No, that's impossible. She said, do you know what caused this? I said, I know, but that's impossible. Sure enough, sure enough, she was pregnant. I was like, take a second one, get a blood test. I got to know that I know. I was like, all right, here we are. You, we just got to, we got to learn as we go. And then all of a sudden comes this baby. And I was so lost at that time. We had a baby. The baby is brand new. And my wife's getting rest. And I go out partying with my friends like, yeah, I just had a baby. Let's go celebrate. Woo! That was the life I lived. And I left my wife in the hospital all by herself with a baby. And I came back the next, this was, this was life for us. And then we try to walk into our relationship. Like we're going to do this right. We're going to last a long time. Let's see how long we can last. And then we ended up getting separated. And for four months, she's living somewhere else with a brand new baby. And I'm living somewhere else, just living my life, just doing what I want to do. But eventually, if that's where you're at, you will realize what's more important. And you will have a hole in your heart that only can come from God and then the person he's connected you with in covenant. 
And so we had to start working through our issues. Fast forward a couple years and I get diagnosed with cancer in 2012, February of 2012. And that year was a mess. The, the, my oncologist told me, hey, he, said, he said, if you ever wanna have kids again, I would encourage you to try now. I had a window of about seven weeks before I would start chemotherapy treatment. So we knew we wanted more kids. I wanted three, she wanted four. We knew we wanted more than one. So we began trying like, okay, because after the fact it's 50-50 and if you wanna go through the process of trying to prep before, it gets very expensive. So we're like, let's just try. Five days before I started chemotherapy, we found out she was pregnant with our youngest, Jordan, praise God. So we had two beautiful boys. But then the whole year of 2012, she is pregnant with a a toddler and I'm going through chemotherapy. It was the roughest year of our lives and we were doing it without Jesus. And I think back to those days and I wish I would have just spent more time falling on my face before God and loving my wife better. But instead we were just trying to hang on and we were literally hanging on by a thread. Fast forward to February of 2013. I'm now cleared. I'm in remission. My doctor has said I can go back to work and God has done a work in my life. And I began going back to church because here's what changed over the course of my chemotherapy journey and cancer. My wife started going to church. And when my wife started going to church, I started paying attention to something's different about her. She started going to church with my son and she started praying. She started loving me regardless of my mess. And eventually God got a hold of me and I thought I should go to church with my wife. That's why if you're going to church, you just keep coming to church. I promise your spouse is paying attention to this and you go in with them. And eventually, June 3rd of 2013, I gave my life back to Jesus and we went all in and the rest is history. But the first two and a half years, we were literally hanging on by a thread. We were surviving. And if you're in that place today of survival mode, I just want you to know today, no matter where you're at in your relationship, that we serve the God of revival and not survival. He is here to revive you, refresh you, renew you. He has better and greater and a hope and a future. And I want you to catch that today. I want you to catch that. How can we walk into covenant, not only with God, but with the person that God's put here on this planet for for us to be with and do life with for the rest of time? There's three ways you can do this. And if you're married, if you're not doing these things, start today. If you're not married, you're single, you're dating, it doesn't matter where you're at. If you take note on this and you begin to work on this now, it'll prepare you to get ready to be married, I promise you. Number one, you have to make the choice to love. You have to make the choice to love. Too many people think love is a feeling. But love, I'll say it this way, love has feeling, but love is a choice. How many of y'all have kids? Where's the, where's, the, where's the parents in the room? Okay, parents, you got kids? You know what I'm talking about because when it's midnight and your five-year-old walks in your room and throws up everywhere on the floor, you do not feel love in that moment, do you? No, that's a choice to stay up all night and clean up this vomit and be with my kid and have no, that is a choice. And if you don't have kids, I just bless your life. It's coming. Y'all better get ready, all right? Kids sick at night, I think to, um, I think to one night, not long ago, we had just moved here, COVID had happened. Megan wakes up in the middle of the night and she is like hyperventilating. It's like, what is happening? We go to the emergency room. We are at the emergency room till 5 a.m. Y'all, I was not happy, but I'm here for my wife. We went home and they said, nothing's wrong with you. And I, I love my wife even more after that. I was like, oh, this is amazing. I love you so much. <laughs> no, I did not feel like I was ready to get everybody, get up out of my way. Get up out of this emergency room. You have to make a choice to love. Choices lead, feelings follow. Choices, that'll help you if nothing else does. I'd write that down. Choices lead, feelings follow. Colossians 3, 14 says, and over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. You gotta put love on everybody. Just like you wake up and you get in the shower and you fix your hair and you put your, you put your shirt, you gotta put love on. Cause I know, I, listen, I know me. I, and if you're real, you know you. And on Monday morning in rush hour traffic, I better have put on my love or I ain't gonna love nobody well, right? I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be doing all kinds of stuff but loving all the people around me. You have to put it on. When do you have to put it on? When you don't feel like it. It's easy to love your spouse, your significant other. It's easy to love when everything is amazing. But what happens when you got $100 to your name and your spouse goes and spends $100 that they didn't even know you had? Come on now. What happens when your spouse says, I'm gonna go shopping? And you're like, cool, just don't spend a lot. Well, your, your version of a lot could be completely different. A lot to me is like $25, $25, that's a lot unless I'm buying some sneakers, then I'll I'll spend a little more, all right? But you, 
you got 25. <laughs> That's like, some of y'all know what I'm telling. I'm venting a little bit up here with y'all, okay? I'm processing with you today, all right? You gotta have expectations and you gotta put on love in the moment sometimes because you're not always gonna feel it, but choices lead and feelings follow. You gotta make the choice to love. Everything I'm saying in here, I promise you'll be okay with it. I promise y'all, it's okay. All right, number two, you have to prioritize the relationship. So you have to make the commitment to say, I will prioritize this relationship. What does that mean? That means put that person first. God, God, then that person, then me. Wait, hold up, wait, hold up, wait, what? Wait, no, 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 I don't understand God first, but then it's me. Well, if it's all about you, at some point it will be you and only you. I'm just telling you, it will be. God, then my spouse, then me. If you always have that approach, I'm telling you, you will live a long and happy life because happy wife, happy life, everybody. I'm just telling you. Fellas, I'm trying to help you up here. Ecclesiastes 9.9, 9, it says, enjoy life with the wife whom you love. All the days of your vain life that he has given you under the sun, being God, because that is your portion in life and in your toil at which you toil under the sun. Enjoy the love of your wife, of your husband. Enjoy that person. That means prioritize the relationship. Go on dates. Like I'm constantly challenged. 14 years, I'm still dating everybody. If I'm not dating, then I'm not gonna have nobody to date anymore. I'm just telling you, you have to prioritize the relationship. It's not like you get, just get married and you're like, all right, cool, I'll see you later. You go to your side of the house, I'll go to, no. No, we're trying to do this thing forever, not to see how long we can go for. Because God blesses every place that you put things first. Okay, so here's the way I'll say it. If you put God first in your life, then you'll see God's blessings in every area of your life. If you put God first in your money, you'll see God's blessing in your money. Listen, we're gonna, in October, we're gonna unpack generosity and stewardship and giving because I think there's become a bad rap in the church over time about giving and money and generosity. But we gotta talk about it. It's in God's word. If you put God first in your money, the rest will be blessed. If you get, put God first in your time, the rest will be blessed. What does that look like? The first 15. The first 15 minutes of my day, I'm gonna give God five minutes in worship five minutes in the word and five minutes in prayer. If you do that first, the rest will be blessed. I'm just telling you, it will. If I put God first in my marriage, my marriage, the rest of the day, the rest of the week will be blessed. So here's an exercise. I'll just give you something simple. If you're not already doing this and you're married, do this. If you're not married and you have somebody that you are currently dating or you're engaged to, do this with a phone call every morning. I do this with my wife. When I get up and I get ready and I get ready to walk out the door and go study for the Sunday ahead or go meet with people for coffee or whatever I'm doing that day, before I walk out the door, I give my wife a hug and I pray over my wife. Because a couple that prays together stays together. You probably heard that before. It's the truth. I'm telling you, put God first in your marriage. Your marriage will be blessed. The rest will be blessed. Because Galatians 6, 7 says this, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. So if you don't like what you are reaping, look at what you're sowing. If you don't like what's coming out of your garden, you better look at what you're planting in your garden. So every day you need to do two things in your garden, so to speak. You need to plant seeds and check for weeds. Plant seeds check for weeds. What does this look like if, if I'm married or I'm getting ready to be married? This means every week, every month, have these conversations. Me and Megan do this quite often where I'll just ask her, like, how am I doing? Am I doing okay? Like, is there anything I'm missing? She might be like, you hadn't talked to me all day. Like, I'm telling you, if you ask the question, it gives an invite for them to tell you, how am I doing? Are we doing okay? How, how do you feel? Like, is there anything you're missing that I'm not giving you? Because I'm telling you more times than not, these unspoken expectations hurt the relationship. And you don't wanna walk into it and not know what the other person needs. Because listen, everyone loves and receives love different than you do. So as a leader, I've had to understand this, even with my kids, my boys are very different than each other. I cannot discipline and love one the same as the other because they do not respond to things the same way. So one of them, I have to really encourage and affirm. And the other one, I have to be like, bro, I will throw you through that wall right now. Like they're very different. I gotta, I gotta love them. Dear. I love you. I, I give you hard, tough love. Like they're very different. And you gotta learn, how does your wife, uh, how many of you ever, ever heard of the five love languages? Five love languages, okay. Some of us, have a love language of physical touch. And if your love language is physical touch, but your spouse's is not, and you're always touching that, they're gonna be like, get off me. Why are you always touching me? You gotta figure out some of them are gifts, okay? So if your spouse has a, has a love language of gifts and you ain't never given them no gifts, 
you, have, you probably ain't never going to get a gift back from them ever. You got to be able to understand the love language. Some of them, it's quality time. How many, how many of you need quality time? Man, y'all are not my people. I'm like, I, I, could just, I could just move on, bounce, go, go, go. I have to learn how to slow down, give some quality time. Like there's love languages. Prioritize the relationship. So again, a little precursor to next week. Married people, keep your sex life spicy, everybody. If you're not married, you do not have a sex life yet, okay? We'll talk about that more next week. You know, like the pastor said, no, the pastor did not say married folks. Let me disclaim her, okay? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to talk. Here's why, because the best defense is offense. Prioritize the relationship. Sometimes you have to put some defense in place and the best way to do that is to have offense. And here's why, again, a little precursor to next week. Married folks, Proverbs 5, 18, let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth. A lovely dear, a graceful doe, let her breasts fill you at all times with delight. Be intoxicated always in her love. Y'all, this is the word of God, I'm just saying. Why do drugs when you can do scripture? I'm telling you, it's just so good, all right? You gotta prioritize the relationship. The best defense is offense. Prioritize the relationship. Cater to their needs. What do they like? Because if you do what they like, I promise they'll do what you like. You give and you'll reap. You give and you'll reap, okay? And number three and finally is we will trust God. And this is, um, this is really the best thing I can help you with. Now, if we're getting to this point right here and you're in a relationship or you're in your marriage, or maybe you hadn't done things right to this point, maybe you're living in a place that was the first two and a half, three years of our marriage, that's okay. All that matters is that you start trusting God today. Again, what you put God first in, he'll bless the rest. Like, so I'll say it this way, God, God has to be in the center of it all. If God is in the center of it all, then he's gonna get you first and the rest will be blessed. So I've got to put God in the center of everything. We will trust God. Psalms 127, one, it says, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. Like how many of us are trying to get this marriage thing right, but we're not even loving God right. We don't even have a right relationship with God. And I'm gonna tell you, if you don't have a right relationship with God, you will, your marriage is gonna have a very hard time staying together. If you don't prioritize God in your life first, the best thing you can give your spouse is your relationship with God. That's the best thing you can give them. If you're dating currently, if you're engaged to be married, like get on fire and in love with Jesus and watch how that blesses that relationship. I'm just telling you, it'll, it'll overflow onto that relationship. Because if you love God better, then you'll love your spouse better. It's just, every time it's the truth. So I brought a couple of graphics that'll help us with this today. You can throw up that first one, Jillian. This is the world's way of doing a relationship, okay? Like maybe you showed up in church and this is a lot of church people. This is a lot of Christians. Is This is the way we're set up. We've inserted God into our lives. So God has a place in our lives. But my, my life is all about me. And you have God and you have your spouse. And what happens is whatever's at the top and the other two are drawn together, what happens is you expect both of these two to come up to you and as they get closer to each other, they get closer to you. That's the way the world sets this up. Now I'm gonna show you the way God's word has this set up for us. This is the way it should look. God at the top, then me and my spouse, meaning as we get closer together, we are getting closer to God together. I have to prioritize my relationship with God before I do anything else. Because again, if the Lord doesn't build the house, the house will crumble, everybody. It's just gonna crumble. I want to be here for a long time with my wife. And here's why, because if you neglect your first love, you will ultimately neglect your second. I wanna love my wife well. The Bible says to love your wife as Christ loved the church is what it tells us. And I wanna be able to do that. How do I do that? I better love God with all of my heart, all of my soul, all of my mind. If I give God all that I have, he will bless the rest and everything else will be touched. I wanna be able to do this the right way. I wanna be able to do this with God in mind, God at the top, because all this changed in my life when I changed. Go back to that graphic, go back to the first one. I'm on top and God was in my life. So this is how my journey started. I didn't just immediately go all in with Jesus. I started going back to church. I inserted God in my life. God's in, God's in my life. I got God in my life. He's a part of my life. And things started slowly getting a little bit better here and there, but I'm telling you, God, if he is in that place in your life, he longs so bad to be up there at the top of that triangle. 
He, ne he never wanted anything from you except all of you. And when God has all of you, it opens you up to all that God has for your marriage, your spouse, your relationships, your parenting, everything that you have, we've got to be able to flip and put God on top. And that way, when we get closer together, we get closer to God because ultimately God can't get the glory unless I give it to him. And I'm going to tell you today, myself, Megan, 14 years in, God's going to get all the glory, all the praise for what he's done in my life, in our marriage. And it's going to be that way for the rest of time. He's my banner. He's my heart hope. He's my everything. He's my rock. And on that rock is a firm foundation. If you'll put your trust in God and you'll put him at the center of it all and at the top, everything else will be blessed. And so if today you came in this room and you're watching online and you're not in that space, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Today, my goal is more than anything, not just to help you with a marriage or a potential marriage one day. My goal is to help you get closer to Jesus. That's the goal that we have above all else. Because if you don't get that right, it's gonna be a real hard journey to try and get any type of relationship right. And so today I wanna to invite you to make a decision, whether you're in the room, watching online, to make a decision to say, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna swap places with you. I'm gonna put you at the top. Maybe that spouse doesn't exist, but I want when they are on the corner of that triangle, I want them to see you at the top and not me. And that, all that takes is a simple prayer. And so today, God, I pray for everyone in this room Everybody watching online, God, I pray that you are stirring our hearts and drawing us closer to you, God. We wanna be better in relationships and we know that starts with you. And so if, God, some of us may have come in the room today and we just need a spark in our relationship with you, a fresh wind, I pray today that you provide that. Today you put a new hunger in us for you and your word and the things of God, of your church, God, and your people, God, we wanna be closer to you. Draw us unto you today, I pray, Jesus. If you're in this room and you know you need to make that move and that switch, you need to put God at the top. Maybe at some point on your journey, he was there and you, you kind of just drifted and you've become back at the top of that triangle and you just need to re reorder some things. Today, it's as simple as a prayer. Just come home, just reorder right here and right now. It doesn't matter what you've done up to this point. It matters what you do with today forward. And all you have to do is say a prayer with me like this. Say, Jesus, today I give you my life. I put you in the center of it all. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth, you are my savior, you are my Lord. Then say these words, I'm all in with you, Jesus. I'm all in for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen, amen. Come on, can we celebrate anybody that said that prayer today? Come on, celebrate that, that's awesome. That's so good. Listen, if you said that prayer today, watching a line in this room, I mean, I'm so proud of you for saying that prayer. We wanna help you take a next step because the best thing we can do is help you grow. Like, I don't, you just don't wanna start and be like, all right, go get them. No, we wanna help you on this journey, be able to grow. Our, our vision is to help you dream big, search deep, find more, live a rich life with Jesus. Today's the starting point. So if you made that decision, if you're watching online, you can text the word connect to the number that you'll see on your screen there. We're gonna send you a text message with one link. It's only gonna be one message. We're not gonna spam text you. We're gonna send you one link through that message. You click that link, fill that form out. It takes you about 60 seconds. Let us know of your decision today. You can do that in the room, but I encourage you to fill out that paper connect card that we gave you. If it's the first time you've said yes to Jesus, let us know of that. If you recommitted your life to Jesus, let us know. Or if you just wanna to talk to a pastor, all those things are on that checkbox, especially if it's your first time. Let us know that today. We wanna to send you some stuff that helps get you connected at a deeper level. Because our goal is not that you would just come to church on Sundays. Our goal is to help you find community and life and begin to search deep together. We wanna to help you with that. So make sure you let us know of your decision today on your Connect card. We'll get you connected at a deeper level because there's so much happening. And I'm telling you, life is better in relationships. Small groups are three weeks in. We wanna help you find a group. Come on, that's the best way we can help you search deep is finding a group that you can be a part of and getting into community. Come on, are y'all enjoying the Real Love series? Is this good? Next week, we're gonna, next week we're gonna get into it, all right? Y'all better invite somebody to church. It's gonna be good, all right? It's gonna be PG-13 now, PG-13. If you got kids, utilize kids next week. I'm just saying, all right? We're gonna have a good time in church. But our goal is that you strengthen your relationship with God first and then with other people. I wanna help set you up for success. It's an honor to be your pastor. Thank you for being a part of this church and a part of this family. We're gonna worship God with our giving before we leave today. 
If you came prepared to do that, you can get that ready. If you're watching online, you're part of our Trove Heights family. Thank you for the way that you give. Uh, if this is your first time here, feel no pressure to give today. This service is our gift to you. We're just glad you showed up. But if you're not, if you're not a current tither and giver to the house of the Lord, consider doing that today. Our goal is all, only this. I'm never gonna ask you to give or what to give, but I am gonna unapologetically ask you to ask God what He would have you do, and then you be obedient to that. Whatever He tells you, you just do that today. I believe that you'll grow in faith. Take a step, put Him first there. It's an act of worship, so we're gonna close our service together with that. If you came ready to do that, you can do that at troveheights.com slash give. You can text to give. You can drop it in an envelope on the way out with our ushers at the door. Uh, but thank you for the way you give, man. Y'all were two years old. 120 people have said yes to Jesus. There's exciting things ahead. We're looking for a new venue for church. There's a lot coming in the months ahead. So y'all keep praying, keep giving as God leads you. And let's get ready for a big fall. Y'all ready for the fall? It feels good outside, y'all. Come on, it's nice. It's awesome. Come on, let's, uh, let's stand today. We're gonna worship with our giving and we'll worship as we end this service together strong. Come on, lift your hands, lift your voices. God, we love you. Today we worship you with our giving. We give you back what's already yours. We say thank you for the way you provide. Use what we give today to make a difference in the world around us. God, I pray you bless us as we go our way this week. Encourage us, strengthen us. And God, today we're determined to give you our all. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Come on, let's worship together. Let's go. And tremble before him chains will break as heaven enters. Holy is the name, holy is the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We say the earth will shake, the earth will shake and tremble. experience the presence of God in this place today. We're going to continue to pray. We'll continue to play as, song, as, as people continue to come up and get prayed for. So have a blessed week. We'll see you back in the room 1030, same time next Sunday. Y'all have a blessed, blessed week.